The cost of IT in business can be staggering. From hardware and software expenses to services like internet and phone, you don't need to spend a fortune on IT to succeed. If your organization spends more than $500 monthly on any service, or you're considering signing a long-term contract, IT Enabled can help you manage your technology and minimize your costs. Contact us today to schedule a free consultation. IT Enabled, we're here to help. Hi, I'm Tara Watson Watkins, President and CEO of the Lufkin Angelina County Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to the Connect Podcast, connecting business to the community. I'm here today with my co-host, Blake Polino of BP Media Group. So we're super excited to have our presenting sponsor, IT Enabled, on the episode with us this week to talk about everything that they do, how great they are at these managed IT services, and how they can really, really change your business and make your life easier if you're currently running your own IT. So let's jump into that now. Well, we're excited to have back uh, to to the Connect podcast, our presenting sponsor, IT Enabled. And y'all have been the presenting sponsor for both years. We appreciate y'all so, so much. You really helped launch uh, the Connect podcast off the ground. So thank you for your support. We're happy to be here. Yeah. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit who you are, what you do, where you're from, and then we'll get started talking about IT Enabled. Okay. IT Enabled is a a managed services provider based in Lufkin, Texas. Um, We help, we provide tech support, uh, cybersecurity, business phone systems, Mm -hmm. and um, just overall technical advice for businesses of all sizes. Yeah. Great. And are you from here, Melinda? Remind me. Yes, I'm from here. You were born and raised here. Absolutely. So share with our listeners kind of who you are and what your role is. with. So I'm an account manager for IT Enabled, Mm -hmm. and I make sure that the accounts are tended to and that uh, we get we get the support that they need. She keeps all the guys in line. Yeah, Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. What she does. I believe it. (laughs) You got a problem? Any question? Get Melinda. She'll tell tell you exactly what to do. I'm. A sales rep also, and I'm a tech guy. Uh, I've been doing IT tech for forever around uh, East Texas and Lufkin, and uh, it's kind of what I do, and I just do whatever Melinda tells me. (laughs) We actually keep Ken for comic relief. Uh, (laughs) That's always good. You know, for years, uh, Melinda actually worked at the chamber Mm -hmm. back years ago, so it's always fun to have her back in the building because she knows where everything is. (laughs) That's great. Uh, Well, let's talk about IT Enabled. I mean, you you talked a little bit about it, but let's really get, uh, I mean, y'all can really handle anything that comes your way that's with phones or computers. Yeah. To be, like, to put it bluntly. Yeah. So our goal is to keep you focused on what you do. A lot of times people get so, uh, business leaders in general, get so busy fixing computers or doing technical work, you know, whether that's restarting this point of sale system because it's not working or the internet's gone out and they don't know what to do. They get so busy in the technical side of it that they don't get to focus on their business. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to alleviate that. We come in, we set up a network that is stable Mm -hmm. and allows them just to work. And their their technology works just like their electricity works. As uh, when they come in, it just works and they don't have to think about it. It's a great analogy. Mm -hmm. Uh, You do your business, we do your IT. Yeah. You don't, as a business owner, you, you don't think about your electricity every day, right? Yeah. So it's like you just expect it to work and it's not something that you're having to spend, um, you know, bandwidth and no pun intended and, you know, <laughs> uh, brain capacity on worrying about if your electricity is going to work. And so you do that through managed IT services, yes. which is, uh, is different. So like people think of IT as like a department within a company a mm-hmm. lot of times, but you guys do that a little differently, right? Because it's, yeah. you kind of, you are the IT company for, yeah. for your for your clients, right? Yeah, so we do, out, it's outsourced IT. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we partner with businesses in different ways. We mm-hmm. can be your IT partner mm-hmm. and do all of the IT, or we can supplement an mm-hmm. IT team. For, so, for instance, sometimes you have large projects coming up and you can't be in all of those places at once. So we can come in and help along those lines as well. But majority of our customers, we are the IT, uh, the IT company for them. And if they get a suspicious email, they send it over to us. We check it out, make sure it's okay or it's not okay and, and help them. Yeah. So it's such an important part and it's taken me, so we've been in business for, oh my goodness, six years now already. Mm -hmm. Good grief. That's that's terrifying. (laughs) Uh, But it, it took me a few years to realize that if there are things that I'm either a not good at or B, don't want to do. Yeah. It makes just so much sense to outsource to, to someone like IT Enabled for things like yeah. that. I mean, we, and that goes to us for like accounting or like, yeah. you know, we, we do 
so now we figured out how that works. We love to outsource things now. Yes. It's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I can pay someone else to do this. Please let, please get this off of my plate. Yeah. Um, so how does that work with your with your clients typically? Um, they typically get to a tipping point right. <laughs> where they're like, I can't do this anymore. And we'll, Ken and I will come and we'll talk to them about what their needs are. Each business is different and the solution that we design for the businesses are different. Um, so, um, a small organization won't need the same, you know, with five or 10 people won't need the same kind of technical support that an organization that has a hundred people. And sure. so um, it really just depends on what your needs are. Also, some businesses are pretty tech savvy and they just need a, a little help mm -hmm. with some things and some have no idea what's going that on. And so <laughs> <laughs> we help, we help with everything. And so we really try to customize the solution that they, that, that is for the organization, both on uh, budget and time, time resource for it. Love that. So what are ways that businesses can protect their data? Um, so there's, there's several different ways that are best practices to protect data. Um, for starters, business data is any kind of information that you, that you have for your business that you need to keep confidential. For instance, at a chamber of commerce, you have your, um, your, your financial information, you have your, uh, your, your, your investors, investors. Yeah. you have, uh, you have all kinds of like, your emails that are between you and investors, not only just your list of investors, but the communication between the investors. You want you want to keep all of that personal. And, um, that is the information that, that you, you need to protect and ways that you can protect that data are using uh, multi-factor authentication, um, using strong, unique passwords for each one of your applications and um, making sure that you train users on the importance of having multi-factor authentication and and a strong password. Mm -hmm. If your users ha don't have the, if you don't have the buy-in from your users that those things are important, then your your attempts to use those things are really kind of wasted because they're going to have a single strong password for all of them That's right. <laughs> and reuse it over and over. And, and some some <laughs> of the situations we get into, we we find user IDs. You go into uh, an office. At, maybe hasn't had a whole lot of security and they've got their passwords underneath their keyboards. They've got them, you know, somewhere right Post there. Post-it note on the monitor. Post-it right note, yeah. that way I can remember it. And, and Bill knows it and Jill knows it uh -huh. and whatever. And so, uh, but that's kind of how things have been done in the past. And it's just, you, you got to really tighten up that. Yeah. So. yeah. so you're telling me my password should not be password, is what you're saying? It should not. Password <laughs> <No. laughs> one. Password one, two, three. Yes, Capital yes. P. Yeah. <laughs> you would be surprised. They're still out there. They're yeah. still out there. One of the things, uh, so kind of talking about best practices with people, um, a lot of the reason that I think that happens is because, you know, we have so many things we have to log into these yeah. days, right? So we have different emails and different accounts, and it's just like the password list, it just gets crazy. What are some kind of best practices for managing that? So uh, aside from obviously sticking a post-it note to the, to the monitor, <laughs> that's a no-no, please don't do well, that. Basically, the, the digital part of that would be a password manager mm -hmm. um, that does basically the same type of thing, but it's all electronic and it's, you know, it's encrypted to where, I mean, you've got a big, giant, unique password and it can generate the sophisticated passwords for you. And they're really easy to use. We can help mm -hmm. people set those things up. That's so. awesome. Yeah. So yeah, on the, the password is I can't ever remember what they all are. So the password manager that you the password managers that you use allow you to remember one password, and you you have to jump through hoops to get logged into it. Um, but once you once you are logged into it, then it remembers all of the passwords for you and will auto fill those for you and create unique passwords and create crazy passwords so that they're harder to they're harder to to break. Yeah. And it'll also tell you too, if you've got two passwords that are exactly the same or very similar, go, you know, those two are kind of close. You might want to consider changing those. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are, those are good features and yeah. a, a good uh, password, password manager. And well. with the password manager, if your password has been caught in a data breach of any sort, it will tell you, you need to change this password and change the password for you. That's great. And since you're only using, since you're only remembering that one password to get into your password mm -hmm. manager, it doesn't matter what that password is, the manager will change it for you. And then it, it, you just continue to let it log in for you. You just continue to let it auto fill your passwords for you. And that's a service that you offer to your clients, right? Yes. Oh, that's great. So if you have a post-it note right now and you're listening and there's a password somewhere that you can see it, you can pull it off and you need to call IT enabled to the lady that you set up with, uh, really good. So, so what are some other things that need to be protected that maybe we don't think about or, or ways to protect uh, those you're, things? You're basically your data, any of your documents, Excel spreadsheets, databases, QuickBooks files, that type of stuff. Uh, you need to back that up securely, either on site in a secure encrypted backup or in the cloud. 
mm-hmm. someplace that if you've got some kind of natural disaster or a ransomware attack or or something happens uh, that you can actually get get to your data. And you also need to make sure that you can get to it. I mean, a lot of people are just backing up to the cloud and for years and they never test, can I get my data back? Mm-hmm. How, how do I do that? Mm-hmm. And um, that's usually the people that are really good at doing that have gone through one of those cycles where they've lost their data right. and go, man, I didn't have backups or I put it in the cloud and I don't even know how to get it back. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they got to call somebody. So it's just that test. Hey, I, I put data up there. How do I get it back? How do I get it back on my home computer? How do I get it back on my phone? Just something simple like that. Yeah. Test it's your back. It's a really good point. I mean, it's one of those things you, you don't really, you don't realize how much you need it until you actually do. Uh, and you said that, you know, people don't know until they've gone through that. We, we've been through that experience before. I mean, we're, um, it usually takes once almost a data company. So we're a video production company, but we were just, we're storing massive, just terabytes and terabytes of files. And, um, we have a great system and, and for years we thought we did. Um, actually we had a chamber video, uh, get messed up in one of these one time we were doing, uh, the video for the chamber gala a few mm-hmm. years ago. And, um, we had an entire, um, hard drive system go down um and we a company that we were using which i will not name um which backed up all of our files into the cloud the process of getting those files back was almost impossible i mean it was so like we they ended up having to actually physically mail us a hard drive with our stuff on it probably the volume and yeah a a lot of it it, how much that we upload but like we had projects that we were working on one of which was the chamber we're like oh my gosh we need this video like (laughs) right now we gotta get this stuff done and thankfully it it all was resolved but we would have never even thought about how that process works to get that data back until it went wrong yeah um so it's really 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 important well one of the things we've done uh, in the in the past is actually restored a businesses complete operating system their servers and everything mm-hmm. on our site yeah and then had them come in and actually turn up a couple of machines and verify they can get to their payroll they can get to their company files so they wanted a test yeah and you know we we restored from the cloud all the stuff that we were backing up and it worked so yeah. it's a good thing to go through to have that confidence level that gosh if it does happen i saw it, i saw it get restored once that's right and i know it's yeah. going to work mm-hmm. i know it's going to work And regularly testing them too, testing those backups, because if you're not testing it, that last back, you're only as good, you're only as protected as your most recent backup, as your most recent successful backup. So we test, we, we test our backups for all of our customers monthly to make sure that, and actually more frequently than monthly sometimes. So, um, but to make sure that we can get back to that starting point, Mm -hmm. because if that, if that, if that file is corrupt or that file didn't complete, then you're going back even further than you expected. And you're losing data from your, from your most recent backup on. Yeah. So. Yeah. Make sure your backups are working. Oh, I mean, there's been people. Yeah. Hey, yeah. We've been backing up for years now. Oh, we, we forgot to pay the bill six months oh. ago oh, yeah. and they got no notification or yeah. they got mm-hmm. lost in the email and the app. Yeah, you you think it's backing up, but there's not anything been pushed to the cloud in six months. Yeah. So you yeah. just got to pay attention. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. scary. It, it is. is. You know, you mentioned emails a minute ago mm-hmm. uh, of things and, you know, I'm always sending an email to Caesar going, is this real? Do I need to do this? And so, you know, it's, I, what I assume is called a phishing email. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about those. And how do you look at it and immediately go, no, it's fake. And I look at it for 30 minutes and try to decide whether or not to open it or not. Okay. So fi- uh, the the two most common ways or the easiest ways are to right click on the from person okay. and see if it is the actual email address that you're expecting. Because mm-hmm. they, can, they can say it's from Tara. And, but the email address is to something completely off the wall. So okay. check the email so right address. Yes, yeah, so okay. right click it, and you can see the from and see see what it. Uh, the other thing is if there's if there's a link in there, mm-hmm. you can right click on the link also and see what the link goes to. Paste it I'm into yeah. To touch it. So you can right click it, paste it into like a Word document, and see what where the link actually takes you. Oh, okay. If there's if you're if you're really just not sure, the best way to do it is to pick up the phone and call the yeah. person that it's from. Absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, what you do is perfect. because uh, call somebody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because if you if that email is compromised and you send them an email, you're gonna be in talking with the criminal or the hacker that that's got the email compromised. And so emailing them is just gonna turn out to be a bad situation. Right. So uh, the best thing to do is, is actually pick up the phone and call someone. You know, we always joke because 
there's an email that floats through here and it'll go through about every four months. Mm -hmm. All the team will start saying, okay, you're sending weird emails again. Uh And um, it'll be sent out to four or five people. We had a brand new employee and she Uh fell for it. Oh, Oh, bless you. She put, you know, money on a gift card. She was out of town. I was on vacation. And then Uh it was like, where do I get this gift card? I'm like, what are you talking about? What gift card? Well, she'd already put the money on it. So we had a a really big team meeting saying, okay, if this, first of all, if it didn't sound like an email mm-hmm. that I'm sending, yeah. you know how I speak and how yeah. I write, uh-huh. then don't touch yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So I think that's one thing that you need to always think about with your employees is, you know, if it's, if it does not look legit, it is not <laughs> yeah. legit. It's, yeah, I agree. Well, <laughs> basically what you did is you, you had a meeting, basically some basic training. That's right. You train, hey, if it doesn't look right, if it smells wrong, it probably it is. is wrong. Yeah. And then ask somebody. That's and, right. uh, yeah, training is going to be a big uh, key there and just making people aware, making yeah. employees aware. Because it's gotten convincing now. So the, yeah. the phishing scams, it used to be, you know, you would think that the Nigerian prince asking you for, yeah. your, for your bank account. And that seems kind of obvious, right? But, uh-huh. you know, that, that's not real. No, <laughs> unfortunately, my <laughs> retirement <laughs> plan is shot now, <laughs> which is an interesting thing. So they... There's a, a really interesting report and data that come out about the Nigerian print scam. And at first you think it sounds like just ridiculous, like who's falling for this? But it was actually kind of genius because the reason that they would send that is the only person who would respond to that kind of email is someone who is extremely gullible. Yeah. And it's so they're not wasting any time. So they're actually very efficient by sending this. I'm a Nigerian prince and I have millions of dollars that I have to give you. So like if they send something kind of convincing to normal people, then they waste their time going back and forth. But if they send that out, they're only going to get responses from people who are probably messing with them these days or uh-huh. people who are actually genuinely. Yeah. Uh, point, but point. now it looks so convincing. So like what you're talking about is an email that looks like it comes from you. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's it's, it's, yes. it's social engineering. Yeah. They, yeah, they find world, some key though. bits of data of you, a family member. Mm-hmm. And, hey, I uh, lost my credit card number and pen. Hey, dad, whatever. And it's very convincing. I've had some of those phone calls too, where it's like, Hey, I click on and I, and I called my daughter and mm-hmm. she didn't send it. I said, then you did the right thing. Just okay. delete it. You yeah. know, do you want me to send it to you? I'm like, no, no. I don't, I don't just, <laughs> delete it. Just and then delete, delete it. You're deleted. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Yeah. One of the things that we do for some of, for some of our organizations is we do phishing sc- schemes throughout the whole organization. And then we can, we, can see how many of them actually clicked on the link oh, and how many of them so opened it. Yeah, right? we so test them. And company. then you yeah. get a report at the end of it that says, hey, this 20% people of people did it. it. Yeah. And then if they do click on it, they actually get these training videos on how to spot a phishing email oh, and what to smart. do. And if so in the smart. case of the, yeah. So like those are kind of fun to them. do. Yeah. I think I told y'all those are years kind of fun ago <laughs> when I worked for the city, <laughs> uh, I got an email from somebody at the city and I opened it and I replied to it. Well, I shut down the entire <laughs> city's <laughs> system. Like payroll, every, I shut it down. Oh, you were the one? It's a hard day for IT. It was bad. I'm like, you asked me a legit question. I answered the legit question. Yeah. Yeah. The IT department was loving you that day. Sure. No, not so much. I made a lot of cookies and took them. Yeah. Yeah, they've really gotten very sophisticated in yeah, their attacks. It's, yeah. it's, um, uh, it's a measure, countermeasure, measure, countermeasure. And mm-hmm. I mean, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need those people actually finding, you know, cures for cancer and AIDS and <laughs> yeah. things like that. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. It's, yeah, it's it's wild what all that can happen. We, we've had it happen in the video industry. So we use a really secure server system to back up all of our footage. And if you didn't update the software on that particular software, it got like three updates behind and people were getting ransomware. So like they would lock down every file you had on that oh. on that server and you couldn't get access to any of it. Yeah. And just because you didn't update your software a couple of times. And yeah. it's, it's, it's so there important. There are horror stories galore out there, but uh, we're thankful there's companies like you that help with that. Yeah. Uh, so talk a little bit about uh, kind of the sweet spot on this. So what I love about managed services like this is it really, really helps to cater to certain sized businesses, right? Because yeah. a lot of us as small business owners, like I'm not a big enough business to have my own IT department, mm-hmm. right? So it doesn't make sense for me to hire you know, IT employees that are full-time handling yeah. that. And it, so I feel like it probably caters a lot to specific sizes. And I'm sure you can handle, you know, all sizes of companies, yeah. but there's a lot of like our listeners here who are a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, how does that work? Is that, is there kind of like a sweet spot that it really helps? And Yeah. Um, so um, usually, usually we can, 
Uh, our sweet spot is usually somewhere between five and 50 employees mm-hmm. um, and that are tech technology heavy. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that we do differently than others is that we also try to look at the um, their entire technology spend mm-hmm. and help them offset the cost of their tech support with other things. A lot of times we'll come in and we'll find out that they're paying too much for yes. these services, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever services they are, internet, phones, uh, subscriptions to, you know, they may have a Dropbox subscription and an office subscription. And so duplicate subscriptions to things. And so we're able to kind of take, peel back the layers on what they're spending. Not only does that help us find out how they're managing their business, but it also helps us to, to cut their costs back sure. so they can actually um, afford the technical support that they need mm-hmm. yeah. to keep them going. That's fantastic. You know, we use uh, we use IT enabled with our phone systems, and um, from the moment that we switched over to y'all, it was like a, a new game changer. And the fact, you know, if we've got a problem with the phone, I pick up the call, and the, you know, I can tell tell y'all what time it is, and you can figure it out. Um, and also, they they'll call us and say, "Hey, something's going on." Well, we don't even know it, but they figured it out before we know it. That's great, and that's been so helpful for our our team. Yeah, yeah a part of uh, managed services is uh, on your critical components. We can actually monitor those things, so we get alerts a lot of times. Like if your internet goes down, or you got a problem on a server or a workstation, we have an alert, and we know it a lot of times before mm-hmm. you know it. If it's critical, we contact you. If it's yeah. uh, um, not so critical. We may call you later on that day or in the morning. And go, hey, something's going on here. Can we pop and take a look? Yeah. So that's that's the the neat part of being able to head off a lot of this before it actually becomes a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. It's always nice. I, I see Charlie coming out of the car. I'm like, something's going on. Charlie's here. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, awesome. Well, where can people learn more uh, about you? Obviously, if you've listened to this podcast before, you've you've definitely heard of IT enabled. The beginning yeah. of every episode. Uh, but where can they learn more uh, if they want to, uh, if they're a business owner, if you're interested in having, um, you know, a, a talk with you guys just to see if things make sense or how to make things better, where, where would they do that? So they can call us mm-hmm. at 936-225-3329, or they can visit us online at www.itenabled.com. That's awesome. it. Well, awesome. thank you all again for being our presenting awesome. sponsor. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah. We truly appreciate you guys. Is there anything else our <laughs> listeners need to know that we didn't cover that you guys, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of things, but anything you want to get, anything you want to get into specifically? I think we're we good. Didn't? Just watch out. If you, if you got any questions at all, give us a call. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll point you in the right direction. Great. Absolutely. They absolutely will. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. Truly appreciate you being here. And thank you so much for listening to the podcast again this week. If you want to watch the video version of this podcast, you can find it on the Chamber Facebook page and on the Chamber YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you again next week.